Hello everyone, we're about to begin the webinar. Um, the Q&A section doesn't seem to be working right now, so I do apologize for that. Um, if you have any questions, you're going to have to email us after the fact at support at itrack365.com. Not sure what's going on with Microsoft, but that's all right. My name is Tom and I'll be doing the webinar today. It's designed for people that are not familiar with how iTrack runs on the Microsoft platform or people that want to get into building their own forms. So if you are an iTrack user already and have seen these various forms in use, uh, there won't be much new to you here, but if you've never designed a form or looked at how the different table structures are connected together, then this will be a good segment for you. I anticipate about 20 minutes, maybe 30, and usually we leave time at the end for open Q&A, but it doesn't seem to be working. So I, again, I do apologize. Feel free to email us at support at itrack365.com. Okay, so let's get going. Uh, we're going to talk about a few different tables, but let's start out with um, how you get to all this information. So normally, if you're an iTrack user, one type or another, you've probably gone in and entered information through either the mobile or the portal. And so we're going to focus on portal. The architecture of iTrack is actually fairly complicated. So there's a lot of data that comes in through portal or mobile, gets synced up to the cloud and, and is uh, thus controlled and retained in the Dynamics or CDS or Dataflex Pro, whatever you want to call it, environment. And from there, all the interconnected bits like Power BI, uh, other modules um, possible through Dynamics, such as field service and talent, et cetera, different connections through Power Flow, which is a Power Apps Automate, et cetera, it all gets connected to this environment. So if you've gone through and um, have seen some of these slides or demos in the sales process, this is an overly complicated version of that. So for the sake of this demo, we are gonna simplify it as much as we can and but if you need additional information you're always uh, able to reach out to us and ask these more technical questions you can get some primer information through our website and then obviously you know any of the consultants or csms or salespeople can assist you with finding more information so in simplest terms the iTrack mobile and web portal are used as entry mechanisms and then that data uh, which sits in dynamics 365 or cdx or dataflex Pro platform is used as the database and the process flow engine. So if you are an iTrack 365 customer, then all your data is in the cloud, whereas if you're an on-premise uh, customer, then you know it's not sitting in the Microsoft cloud. It's probably a local cloud or some other third-party cloud. And so all the corresponding entries, tables, values, dropdowns, et cetera, have an equivalent source or location in D365. And I will show you how some of them look and how some of them connect. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna have two different windows up. This one shows what a normal user would see when they log into Portal, and then I'm gonna show the equivalency on the Dynamics side. So depending on your particular permissions in Dynamics, you may or may not see some of these options. So for customers that do development on the Dynamics platform outside of iTrack 365, you have a lot of different options to see information. So if you have full security permissions, you can obviously see more tables. If you have partial, you see partial tables. And then if you're an end user, you probably won't even see this. So this will apply to um, uh, administrative or at least high level uh, people that are interested. Okay, so I'm going to choose one of these uh, apps uh, to go into the i365 hub. And all this is is a shorthand view of all the tables that might be relevant to me if I'm a user uh, of iTrack forms. So on the left hand side, see are my tables. And down here, if I have additional permissions, you'll see uh, additional menus that you can go to. And the UI might be different for customers that are on older web client UI, which uh, Microsoft is phasing out in favor of the new UCI, Unified Common Interface. 
So this is what I'm using. So the menus are on the left hand side, whereas if you're using the older interface, the options would be at the top. So everything that I need for this demo are available here. So I won't be uh, going too far away from this table. So let's talk about a few things. So first and foremost, if you go in and you're logged into the portal, um, normally if you just log in, you're obviously at the dashboard page. Uh, and then if you navigate away to the forms page, you start seeing some of this information. Okay. So the first thing that you see, there are categories and within those categories are individual forms. So this is the first thing we can show you the equivalency of in Dynamics. So on the left hand side, if you look at form groups, so I'll scroll down here and click on form groups, you'll see that there are six different groups. So uh, company and compliance, essential mobile worker, employee process flow, standard DGC support, and self-learning. So if you look here, you'll see that that's exactly what we're seeing here from the side view. So this basically says that I can create different groups and put different forms inside those groups to make it easier for users to navigate. So that's the first thing that you saw, and there's the one-to-one -one correspondence of what you see in Portal versus what you see in Dynamics. Next, if you expand one of these groups, you'll see the individual form types. And uh, if we click on something like business continuity plan, that's an, a form. So if I just go back here and go to form types, you'll see that there's a COVID-19 business continuity plan form here. So we'll come back to this a couple more times, but again, you're seeing a one-to-one -one relevance of what exists in the portal versus what shows up in Dynamics as a table. So I already pre-opened up a form for business continuity plan, so I'm going to click on that. And this just saves me time from having to load it. And then you start seeing the basic structure of the form, which is usually a set of questions, set of control areas where you can uh, select question and answers, do checklists, upload documents, all that exists somewhere in Dynamics. So if we pick on something that's relatively easy, such as users, if I click this drop down and do show all, this should show me all the people that are set up in this COVID-19 instance that we use for our COVID-19 solution. So if I go and navigate back over to Dynamics and I select up at the top employees, you will see that the same users that show up on that drop down, plus a few others that are not visible for other reasons, you will see them in here. So if you click on through those, you will then get the basics of the employee setup, which is first name and last name. And then there's also a couple additional requirements, such as saying you know, what company and office that you're in. So depending on the setup that you have, the different organizational structural levels, would have a corresponding entity in this instance. In this instance, we actually don't have much set up, so I'm not gonna demo it, but um, if you are a typical customer of iTrack, we would recreate your org structure, and then it would be mirrored in these dropdowns. Okay? And there is a menu for those, and they're called Form Business Units. Again, I'm gonna click on that, but there's nothing in here. So let's go back to employees for a second and just mention something. Uh, if you already have active users in your Dynamics environment. So that means you probably use uh, Dynamics, uh, Business Central, or FNO, or any one of those uh, other modules, and those people are already in the system. So this becomes kind of like a secondary setup where you set up the employee so that they can use the iTrack product specifically, and then you simply relate the employee record uh, to the user record, and uh, that's how the system knows they're one and the same. So that's additional steps. You don't need to worry about it for this demo. We do have documentation and it's probably been covered in other videos as well. But you now know that if an employee record exists, then the user shows up in drop downs and they can obviously be uh, use the system itself. Okay. Next, if we look at another drop down such as area and facility or location, some fields you simply just type in what you want and others are drop downs such as the address, a GPS, or other way to indicate the location. This is built in as custom fields or custom dropdown options within the form itself. So I'm gonna navigate to form types. I'm gonna pick the business continuity plan form that we're looking at. 
and I'll introduce you to um, a section um, here on the right hand called form sections and when within those are custom set up um, sections that you can add as needed and if you look at something like general information within here you'll see uh, general fields like reported date entered by area and facility and location that you just saw on the screen so again those can be set up differently as needed on different forms and all they are is a field that uses one of the predefined conditions that we have in the system. So you have options to be able to do text boxes, you can do drop downs, multi select, etc. So that on screen correlates to a section within the form type. Yeah. Also on the left hand side, you'll notice that the forms have statuses. So statuses will vary by form oftentimes, but more most common are some sort of draft, some sort of review, some sort of action phase, and some sort of closed or archive phase. So if we again go back to dynamics and we pick um, form status, you will see that this is the totality of all the different statuses that are in the system and are available to be used on the different forms. So if we go into something like draft, ignore the error, and then I click related and forms, this will show me all the forms that this draft status can show up on. So again, if you add or remove different form types from this, then the status of draft won't show up but typically draft is a common one and therefore it will show up on all the forms. However, if you have uh, no review phase in the form process or no implement action phase, uh, you can remove those and they don't show up. Okay. Next, we're gonna look at the various types of checklists that the system can have. So there's more than one way of doing it, so I don't wanna confuse people too much. So I'm just going to focus on the two most common types. So this is an example of a checklist um, that if you scroll down, you'll see there's just a long list under category. And if you click the edit button at the bottom, it brings up a different window. Then you can make selections of saying whether something on that checklist was done in progress, not done or not applicable. So how that looks in the system, it's part of the form inspection. So on the left hand side, there is a table called form inspections. And if I click on that and I go into the COVID-19 checklist status report and scroll down, you'll see that there are sections in here and you know they have the name impact on the business from coronavirus. And if I go over here, impact on the business from coronavirus, impact on workers delivery, impact on workers client delivery. So those sections correspond to what people see visually on screen. And then if you keep drilling down lower and lower into the different levels, you'll see that's the questions um, that are being asked. And so all the other stuff that you see about giving them a weight or a failing condition, that's additional setup. And I'm not going to focus on that because it'll make things a little bit too confused. But that's one way of building a checklist or a questionnaire in the system. Now, other forms have slightly different checklists or slightly different questionnaires. So I've picked another form here called pre-work assessment and monitoring. And we have something in here called the COVID-19 screening questionnaire. So if I click the ed but ed edit button here, you'll see that a slightly different survey comes up. So yes, no questions pertaining to your health and well-being. So this is a different way of setting up um, the the checklist or the questionnaire and so there is another type of table that's called form checklist and if you click on that you'll see that there are different lists in here and if you click on one of those assessments you'll see that the different type of questions that are available so have you traveled, traveled outside of canada in the last 14 days have you been in contact with persons etc as you can see those correspond to here and again if you drill into one of those you'll see that you have the ability to select what the answer options are. So in this case, it's a simple yes, no. So on the checklist of items, we just have yes, no as our categories. And that again, corresponds to what you can select on this form.
Okay, so it will vary slightly based on how you set it up and because different requirements, different customers uh, require a little bit either more control or more simplicity, we have options of doing those different things. But again, in simplest terms, uh, people are able to go and create whatever visually uh, works better for you in iTrack 365. Another function that's common to form building is creating follow-up action plans. So this is alternatively called corrective actions, and they exist on a lot of forms where observations need to lead to actions. So you notice something wrong, you have to fix it, and you have to assign it to someone. So in here, you typically enter what you want to do, um, information, who it's assigned to, text, due dates, priorities, etc. And this goes and gets assigned to somebody. So in the system, if an action plan is created, it exists separately from the form. And then if you look on something like the dashboard, if something has been to assign to yourself or a user, they show up like this. So it's related to a form, but it's a separate entity different from the forms. So once those are created, um, there's a way to see them in the system. And if you go to form tasks, which is right here, and then if they're not assigned to me, I'm just going to select all form tasks. And you'll see that all the form tasks that have been entered will have a subject, will have a number uh, related to it, but this is the creation of that corrective follow-up action, and you'll see all the information that's captured on screen, such as the text, the start and due dates, the priority, everything is just packaged into the form task itself. Okay. So in here, for example, we typically wouldn't go in here to make uh, changes because you would do that on screen yourself when it's assigned to you and you have to follow up and do the task. But if there's something broken or a change needs to be done behind the scenes, then assuming you have permissions, you could come in here and change the due date, for example, without reopening the form uh, or you know change the text or change what's assigned to. It's typically not done that way, but it could be. Kim, the other thing that if you observe the different forms, once they're saved, they get a form number entered in the system. So once they're saved, you can start following their path in Dynamics. So if I look at forms, you'll see that form 1258 and 1259 that I've saved exist in here. And if I drill into it, you'll see that the, all the information that you see on screen, again, the name of the form, the group it belongs to, uh, what the due dates are, you know, what are the different selections, it all gets captured within the form Sorry, I actually clicked on the wrong thing. Let me go back. I clicked on the form type, apologies. I need to click on not one of the blue screens and you'll see the information here. This is actually the correct one. So you'll see there's the form number, uh, what the status of it, you know, what's it doing behind the scenes as far as the assignment, the calculations, what the reported date are, and then, um, you know, what are the different selections made uh, as you're going and in, in, entering in the form. So there's a lot more information connected to the form. So unless you're an advanced user, this is more information that you need to see. But if you think of the form as a bucket that captures information, then theoretically, if it was captured on the form, it is then searchable, viewable, and extendable. So just gonna pause a little bit and talk about the extendability. So if you think about data residing in a single location. So if you've entered in the form through either mobile or portal of iTrack 365, it's now sitting in Dynamics. And then because the CDS or Common Data Service is available to other Microsoft products, you can now start reporting on the information. So you can report on it through Power BI. You can do reporting directly in Dynamics, such as if you wanted lists or categories or statistics. You can then um, action it or link it with other data sources through something like um, power scripting, or you can take the data and then um, move it into other aspects of your Microsoft Cloud. So you can create process flows and that generate emails or integrate data with another a reporting engine. The possibilities are quite far and wide. 
So the last thing I think we'll touch upon before wrapping this up is form types. So I've shown you quite a bit of the different sub options, such as the groups, the statuses, inspections, the checklists. But ultimately, once you're ready to start building your own form types in the system, this is where everything will come together. So you're going to go in and you're going to create a new form type, uh, which is the high level of the form. And then you're going to start adding these bits and pieces of data into the form. So again, I'm going to actually pick on the first one that we went into, which is the business continuity plan. So instead of building one from the beginning, which we'll, we'll tackle in another webinar, I'm going to show you how a few of these things come together. So again, I'm going to click on the business continuity plan. And in here you'll see the form type name. You'll see some of the things that are happening behind the scenes, such as, you know, how are the due dates calculated? It's more than you need to know at this point, but you have sections for description and comments, and then you have these form sections. So I already previously touched upon general information, but I'll click on it again. And so this has the high level um, values that you capture, such as the date entered by the area and location. And then you'll start seeing that the checklists are then connected. So you build the checklist and you connect it to the form. And that way you can track the progress of the questions being answered. And then if you need to upload documents or attach documents, you would then create a section that then lets you grab the attachments. And then you will see a section for the action plan or the corrective actions. So this is that bit of information that uh, follows through with corrective things that need to happen on the observation. And then if you have a section that you do for employee sign off, which is just at the very bottom, there you go. There's also a section for that here. Okay. So all these additional bits and pieces, you put them together as needed, you order them in the way that you want, and then the user gets the full experience of the form just by connecting uh, a bunch of pieces together. Okay. So hopefully that made sense. Again, this is meant for introductory purposes for people that have never seen how the different um, values of a form look in 365. And also this is a nice primer for if you want to start building your own forms. I do again apologize for not having uh, Q&A working. So if you have questions um, about this video, go ahead and uh, send them to our support at support at itrack365.com. And then we will also be posting this video on our website. On a few different pages, but the easiest one to get to is itrack365.com slash webinars. And then if you go to the bottom of the page, you'll see that we post videos of past webinars. So we'll add this one as well. And we also have a video page and we also have a YouTube page. So you should be able to find this video after the fact. Hopefully that was productive uh, and helpful information. Uh, once again, my name is Tom. Thank you for your time.